Over the last year, scientists from the National Oceanography Centre have been working with local partners in Belize to understand and steward the natural marine resources. Belize is home to the world's second largest coral reef system, which is a biodiversity hotspot and provides employment opportunities to local people in sectors such as fisheries and tourism. Belize is also the most forested country in Central America, with its ecologically diverse rainforest providing important habitat for many species of birds and animals. However, we're observing a transition to a, a more agricultural system with species such as palm oil, banana, sugarcane and other cash crops becoming increasingly important in the local economy. Hi, my name is Esther Hernandez. I am currently a student of the University of Belize and I'm doing my bachelor's in chemistry. As demand for farmland intensifies, forests are experiencing high rates of deforestation. When trees are replaced with agriculture, we see an increase in the amount of soil and nutrients running off land and into river systems. This can alter the chemistry within the river and have consequences downstream in the coastal zone. My name is Abel Carillas. I'm an assistant professor and researcher at the Natural Resource Management Program of the Faculty of Science and Technology of the University of Belize. The Macal River is influenced by three dams, which are, is changing um, the flow of the river. Uh, in fact, also changes in colors. Um, the Macal River is coming all the way from Guatemala, have different impacts, in particular from agricultural development, effluents uh, released from households, and so forth. You can see a complete separation of the color of the water. One that is more brownish and lighter, one that is more greenish. So we want to see you know, what we are picking up in terms of the quality of the water. To better understand what these consequences might look like in the coastal ocean, we measured a range of water quality parameters at key locations throughout the country's main river system and along tributaries which flow through characteristic land use types such as pristine forests and various forms of agriculture. By studying how these different and changing types of land use alter the types of organic material and nutrients in the river, we are better able to assess how future land management decisions might impact aquatic water quality. We can then track the river plume out into the coastal zone to investigate how this terrestrially influenced water interacts with the coral reef system, providing information to inform sustainable environmental decision making in the future. The dynamic nature of rivers mean they must be monitored regularly and so we are working with scientists from the UK to develop a river monitoring network. Rivers are highly dynamic systems which means they change rapidly. This dynamism means that we need to measure them frequently so we've been establishing monitoring programs with students from the University of Belize to make frequent measurements so the impact of flash flood events for example can be understood. This latter part of the programme has demanded that we build a collaborative relationship between the National Oceanography Centre, the Centre for Ecology and Hydrology and the University of Belize in Belmapan. This three-way relationship is becoming increasingly productive and has led to some amazing insights into the coastal rivers and how they're coupled to the ocean and to the landscape. Uh, my name is Michael Jenkins. I am from the Belize Port Authority um, my responsibilities here at the Belize Port Authority is um, navigational safety and ISPS port security control. The team from UK use a purpose-built containerized autonomous marine environmental laboratory, also known as the CAMEL, to collect high-resolution data for Belize Barrier Reef. Hydrographic and oceanographic instruments mounted on the CAMEL's autonomous boat the sea worker are used to create detailed maps of the underlying seafloor, coral structures, whilst remotely operated vehicles fitted with cameras used to visually assess the impact of changing environment on this important ecosystem. Hi, I'm Arlene Young. I'm the director of the Coastal Zone Management Authority and Institute. The outputs of the surveys that were completed with use of the CAMEL will serve not only our institution but also institutions like the Belize Port Authority, the Fisheries Department to get a better understanding of the bathymetry as well as the 
hydrographic aspect of the marine environment. My name is Joaquin Urbina. I am an assistant professor of chemistry at the University of Belize. My research interests include uh, research in environmental remediation as well as water quality. Seagrass meadows are powerful habitat builders, stabilizing the seafloor with their intricate root systems and slowing down waves with their leaves. They play an important role as nursery grounds for commercially important fisheries species and offer coastal protection, water purification, and many more valuable ecosystem services. Seagrass meadows can also be intense sites of carbon burial and storage, making them powerful natural carbon sinks. The carbon stored within these systems is called blue carbon, and quantifying it will help to inform local management decisions. We set out to determine how much carbon was stored within the seagrass meadows of Turnoff Atoll, a protected marine reserve administered by local partner organization, the Turnoff Atoll Sustainability Association. Above ground biomass was measured using a series of quadrat surveys with short cores being collected from each site to help understand the rate at which carbon is being stored in the present day. We used long cores to dig deeper into the seagrass sediments and will use radiocarbon dating to determine how long these seagrass meadows have been storing carbon for. The next step is to develop a classification tool which allows us to predict how much carbon is stored underground using surface characteristics. We'll use models to link below ground carbon storage with above ground biomass and extrapolate over a wide area using low altitude drone surveys and satellite imagery to map these seagrass meadows from above. This will facilitate regular monitoring and more extensive survey work by our local partners. It will also produce Belize's first measurement-based estimates of seagrass blue carbon storage. The work that the National Oceanography Center is doing is excellent and because it provides data that we do not have and data is needed for better management of the reserve of the atoll, especially the ecosystems, because it tells us what we have, what we don't have, what we can do, what we can't do, and how to move forward to better protect that ecosystem. It's important for us to track the river plume as it enters into the coastal zone so that we can have a better understanding of how land use impacts on our marine ecosystems or habitats and the species that are um, within the coastal zone. Having this information is also important because in order to develop appropriate responses and management interventions, the evidence is, is needed. Um, without the evidence, we will not be able to be effective in our interventions and get the desired outcomes for people and the environment. We've been working with our Belizean colleagues now for about a year. People coming from the Belize to the UK, going from the UK to Belize. We've started student projects. We've undertaken joint field work. And our collaboration is now maturing to the point where the, the monitoring programs run by the students within the University of Belize are ongoing. We're seeing the first results coming through to the point where we can write scientific papers about them. And the next step is for our information to start informing policy and the, the regulations that Belize is implementing to protect its own coastal environment. We aim for our project to continue for many years to come, working jointly with Belizean partners in order to understand both the Belize marine ecosystem, but also to develop sustainable solutions that can be rolled out more widely across the Caribbean and other tropical areas, so that future generations will have uh, the tools that they need to manage this fragile, sustainable and important marine resource that is the coastal ocean.